Bobby Peake's two-bedroom home in Durban, South Africa is neither humble nor grand, but he inevitably gets around to showing a visitor what he calls his million-dollar view. This is the view I grew up with. This is engine refinery, the ex-mobile refinery, and every day, 60 tons of sulfur dioxide pollution is pumped out onto our community. The engine refinery, just across a two-lane road from the nearest home, was built in 1954 by Mobile Oil. Growing up in this neighborhood in South Durban, Bobby Peak suffered severe respiratory illness. As kids, me and my buddies came down here and played rugby quite often. We were unaware of the dangers that lurked just behind us over the fence. And it's at that time when we all revved up playing a hard game of rugby and when our lungs are open that the sulfur dioxide is just pouring straight down us. In the single block of Peak's family home, at least one member of each household has died of cancer. 80% of South Africa's crude oil comes via that ship and that void. What happens then is it goes to Satriff, the biggest refinery in Africa, just behind me. It gets produced, it gets refined, and the rest of the crude oil and the petroleum products goes via pipelines to engine. But all of this production produces hazardous waste. What happens with this toxic hazardous waste? Well, we have a black community over there. We can just dump it there, and that's what government and industry has been doing for the last 20, 30 years. After the toxic waste is dumped, in Amlazi, next to a community, it leaches into the Spingo River and comes out there. It then just flows through where the children are playing, and it enters into the sea again, pollutes our seas back from whence it came. Evidence mounted that the engine refinery was killing the people of South Durban. School children in this community have three times the respiratory ailments of children in neighboring white communities. The children are more receptible to the impacts of pollution. When Engine announced its plans to expand the refinery, Bobby Peake rallied his neighbors to action. In the area that I've grown up in, we have two petrochemical factories. We have two landfill sites, toxic landfill sites. We have a paper factory. We have a chrome factory, two fiber producing factories. And this is all across the road from communities, not 200 meters away, but across the road. When we started research within the community, we unearthed the chemicals that were being let off by these industries and anybody can make the link. Finally, President Nelson Mandela met with Peake and his neighbors to see firsthand the damage that was being done. The result was the South Durban Steering Committee for Environmental Management. A chairman was elected, Bobby Peake. After President Mandela came to the area, he decided that he would need to set up a full steering committee to look at the environmental management of the area. Then we realized as communities, one of the ways to make this work was to unify ourselves across ideological, cultural, and ethnic lines and be one community and individualize the industry out and go on a one-on-one -on -one with them. And it's at that level we gain success. Shortly after the Mandela meeting, the committee turned its attention to a notorious landfill, the Umlazi 4. But the toxic landfill site, it had to close. The only way to close it was to go to the streets and put public pressure on government. The committee mobilized the very ones who had the most to lose if the toxic waste dump continued its operation. The school children. The dump was closed. But for Bobby Peake, this clear victory had a hollow ring. The problem is there are many Amlazis right through the country and right through KwaZulu Natal. And we can't just solve our own problems. We have responsibility to our brothers and sisters in other neighborhoods to solve their problems as well and to teach them and show them that what they're living in is a problem. In a way, people who live with these kinds of experiences every day get used to it. And I think he, he's played a very important role to say, well, that's not fair. You don't deserve to live like that. And, and really motivate communities and act as a catalyst for action. Once interviewed for a job and they asked me, where would I like to be in 10 years? I always say, I'd like to be doing the same thing that I'm doing today, just finding more smarter ways of being more in one day. For outstanding environmental achievement in Africa, a 1998 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Bobby Peake of Durban, South Africa.